We begin tonight with Russia's intensifying war against the people of Ukraine and the increasing attacks on cities now under siege. In these images from Irpin near Kyiv, you can see civilians carrying their belongings at the top of the screen just before that shell hit. Soldiers helping people leave amid the bombing. The town's mayor says eight people were killed during evacuations. Secretary Blinken in Moldova today saying the U.S. has seen credible reports of attacks on civilians that would constitute war crimes. For a second straight day, a brokered ceasefire that was supposed to allow civilians to leave the battered city of Mariupol was broken by Russian shelling. Empty buses awaiting passengers who were unable to board for a ride out of the war zone. Russian forces targeting key infrastructure as well. Firefighters battling raging fires at this airport in central Ukraine. And tonight, a U.S. senior defense official tells ABC News they believe at least 95 percent of the forces that Russia had massed at the Ukraine border have now entered the country. We have team coverage once again tonight. ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, leads us off from Lviv. This is Ukraine tonight. Watch that man on the street and at the top of your screen, those civilians trying to escape. Then, it's a mortar lobbed by Russian forces north of Kyiv as they advance on the capital. A cloud of smoke and dust. You can hear that dog howling in pain. Stay there. All right. The attack, which just happened to be captured by reporters, the mayor of Irpin saying at least eight were killed, including three members of the same family. Their luggage on the ground, backpacks still on. Only the father reportedly had a pulse. It's the same area where thousands are fleeing the fighting. Hundreds pinned down at this destroyed bridge, waiting for a chance to run. The U.S. tonight saying there are very credible reports of deliberate attacks on civilians by Russia. A war crime. Families darting through the smoke-filled streets. Carrying what they can. Soldiers helping lift that stroller and child over that railing. Then hurrying to a bus, and they hope to safety. The U.N. tonight saying 364 civilians have been killed in this war, including 25 children. Warning the toll is likely much higher. Most of the casualties caused by explosives. And for a second consecutive day, Russia reportedly breaking a ceasefire in Mariupol. The aim was to give residents a chance to evacuate. A convoy of Red Cross buses lined up, still empty. The driver waiting for passengers, defiant, saying, I'm not afraid anymore. There are many of us. We will find a way through. But those civilians in Mariupol never got out. The Russians didn't cease fire. A lawmaker in the region saying a gas pipeline damaged, leaving more than 750,000 people without heat. The temperatures here in Ukraine dropping below freezing each night. <inaudible> Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky renewing his plea tonight for a no-fly zone for planes, warning of an imminent Russian attack on the port city of Odessa, pleading with world leaders, create humanitarian airspace without missiles and aerial bombs. This is your humanitarian duty to protect us. The Russians using their massive aerial advantage to target key infrastructure as well. Video circulating on social media and verified by ABC News shows an aerial bombing destroying this airport in Venezia. Firefighters struggling to douse jet fuel tankers shooting flames into the air. Part of the terminal crumpled on its side. And tonight, the IAEA, now deeply concerned, reporting this nuclear facility, the largest in Europe, targeted by Russian fire on Friday, is now under the command of Russian forces. Ukraine's nuclear regulator saying Russians have switched off some mobile networks and the Internet and are limiting communications at the nuclear reactors of Zaporizhia and at Chernobyl. This train has just come from Zaporizhia. Uh, that's where that nuclear plant is, and they just keep coming. We've been watching this for minutes. They keep coming down the stairs. Mothers with children, everybody clutching the hand of the person who's most important to them. And today, the most vulnerable coming from the besieged city of Kharkiv. Some 30 disabled children in a special train compartment, tenderly handed from one volunteer to another. Dima is one of their caretakers. It was shelling non-stop, uh, air alarm, and uh, it was scary, really scary. There were no gurneys or stretchers, so the precious cargo, two children unable to move, was placed on those tarpaulins. 
They were hand carried down the platform and across the tracks, down that staircase, through the throng, into a city bus. Making do with that precious cargo. And let's get right to Matt Gutman in Lviv, Ukraine. And Matt, there's news tonight that the U.S. has okayed NATO countries to send warplanes into Ukraine. Zelensky, Lindsay, has been pleading with the West for either a no-fly zone or fighter jets. It's been a hard no on that no-fly zone. But tonight, Secretary of State Blinken said he is actively working with NATO ally Poland to deliver its older fighter jets to Ukraine. So what we're seeing here is basically the evolution of the armament of Ukraine. Just a few days ago, the most sophisticated weapons platform being sent to Ukraine were shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles. Now it's fighter jets a far more complex process. Lindsay. Matt, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.